All right, good morning. We've got several things we need to get done this morning, so let's go right into our prayer. And, uh, uh, Herman, you didn't turn yours on. It's still on me. Is it on now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got into, uh, into our prayer. Got several things we need to get accomplished today. Uh, we're going to have a fun day. So let's begin with the word of prayer, a couple of announcements, and then turn it over to Chris. Let's begin with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this assembly. We thank you so much for the opportunity we have to come together with your word. We pray that, Father, that your spirit will open our eyes to things you'd have us to see and to understand. And we work together for our young people in this assembly, the working for the various organizations that we meet with them in the summer and in the spring. So, Father, we pray now these things in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, uh, it's been some time, and uh, about three weeks, that uh, Chris Dave's dad went home to be with the Lord. Now, I've had the privilege of knowing Mike, uh, that's uh, the dad, and um, his mother now lives at home with start meeting with talk with them but um, it's been a really wonderful thing about what I do know about uh, Chris dad um, one of my values of my mother is that she led me to the Lord well Chris dad led him to the Lord right and that, that to me is just a, something special your mom and dad are the ones that actually not just took you to church, but gave you that gospel. And uh, so it'll be wonderful to meet, uh, see Mike again in heaven. And um, we'll be in, continue to be in prayer for the family, all of the family. Um, now, let's talk about some couple of things we need to take care of. Uh, Jeff, why don't you tell us what's going to be happening with our mail? Okay, uh, just so everybody knows, the P.O. box that we had in Richardson is now closed. We don't have that P.O. box anymore. All the mail is now going to be delivered directly to the building address. So Julie, last week on the website, put on the banister address there. So if you go there, I think it shows our church site. It shows mm -hmm. the mail-to address. Yeah. So if, uh, if everybody, if you just send the mail to the building, we'll be able to get it more efficiently than we were before. Any mail that would have gone to the the old P.O. box will be transferred to the building. Okay. Building address, so. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, as far as prayer, got any prayer requests that we need to make a knowledge of? Yes. Um, if you could be in prayer for some new health diagnosis that we've just gotten for Brian. Um, I'll let him share a little bit more about what that is and appreciate your prayers this week specifically on Wednesday morning for our first uh, next step plan. Okay, so I went to some testing and stuff and Friday morning we had an appointment and I have a small mass on my right lung. I guess they consider it small, but it's like walnut size on there. So I'll have to do a biopsy and see everything like that. And see what it is. So what are they going to do? A biopsy and see if it's malignant or a bi or whatever. Or when when will that happen? I don't know. We're gonna have a consultation Wednesday, so we'll find out. Okay. Keep us posted. I will. Keep us posted. Right. We'll Thank be in prayer. Thank you. All right. My goodness. Um, any other program? Yes, son. Um, I have a cousin that her daughter is in the hospital with a, a bacterial infection. We're not sure. I mean, she's she's. Stable, but they're not real sure how serious it is. So, just some prayers for her. Be in prayer. Where does she live? She's in Oklahoma. Her name is Miranda. Miranda, okay. Thank you very much. We'll be in prayer. Yes. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> my niece Sheila, that's been on the list, that has been diagnosed with uh, uh, colon cancer. They have a meeting Tuesday at, with uh, MD Anderson and their Katie Blanche. So we'll find out what they're going to do from that point. So okay. still keep them in prayer, please. 
<clears throat> Very good. I want you to re realize something. I hear everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other uh, prayer request? Okay, one more thing. Next uh, Sunday. Oh, uh, yeah, excuse me. Uh, I'm potentially going to have a chance to witness to a Jewish lawyer, uh, law professor uh, at the uh, SMU, but probably in this uh, few weeks. So please pray for that. His Very good. Yes, we will. His name is yeah. Saul. Saul. Okay. Very good. We'll be in prayer. I always like that. Particularly like it being Jewish, but anything, any belief, any not even belief. Person. So we'll be in prayer. Thank you. When when do you think you'll be talking with him? Uh, the for sure the via phone will be the next week. Next week. Uh, but the, there will be the, a few more that sessions to come because he's representing me. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be within this this month, this coming month. Sure. Okay, very good. We'll be, be in prayer. Okay, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And we're going to, it was just so interesting. I thought, I've been doing this now for 46 years. And it's, it's not a good thing to think, well, if, we can do different. What can do different? What can do different? Next Sunday, we haven't done just the resurrection for a long time. So next Sunday, we're going to do two, the morning and the late one. We're going to do both of them dealing with the resurrection of our Savior. So that'll be next Sunday for uh, Resurrection Sunday. And then we will close it with having a uh, supper or the uh, large table. And we will not do it publicly this time because we're, we're accustomed. We, you go to your family and all. But then the following Sunday, or the next Sunday, the following time, we're going to go back to having it here in the church with fellowship. So next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, both services, please plan on being here. And uh, we go through these things and... Um, uh, yes. Make sure they know you're teaching both classes because they won't come if they think I'm teaching the first one. <laughs> they might. <laughs> so uh, next Sunday, we're both of them dealing with the resurrection, and uh, so and then also do the communion service. So that'll be next Sunday. Okay. Last week. Bill was supposed to speak every Sunday morning, but he didn't speak here last Sunday morning because he was busy with uh, uh, the uh, springtime by the slam. slam. And uh, so I've heard wonderful good things about it. By the way, is uh, your wife not here? <laughs> She's not. But everything's okay. <laughs> She's down in uh, College Station with uh, a group of the kids that came to the breakthrough last week. Okay. Um, are we going to be able to have a copy of the work that she did? I I've got it. All right. Here. Good. So, yes, we can good. get it to you. Good. I want them to see that. That was really good. So, I'm turning all of it over to uh, Chris Day and Chris Lamb. Good morning, everybody. Um, first, thank you very much for the prayers for my family. Uh, I do want to uh, follow up just for a second on my father passed away. Uh, it was what day? Well, I don't even remember what day it was. It was a week and a half ago or so. Um, it was a uh, it was a joyful time in that we know that my father went to be with the Lord. He was promoted home. He was in poor health. <clears throat> And he was very uh, challenged to breathe. He had COPD from 50 years of, of smoking and um, cancer in the lungs and all that sort of stuff. So it was a joyful, joyful time to get a chance to go up and see my dad before he passed. Uh, as Pastor Maddox was saying, the uh, my father let our family, and this is the story my mom lo loves to tell, because if anybody knew my father, he was a he was a hard man. He was uh, he was. 
Uh, my mother-in-law, uh, Lori's mom, likes to say, I had to learn to love your dad. <laughs> but she did. Um, and, and I had <clears throat> 53 years of experience learning to love my dad. So he was a, a, a tough man, a hard man. We were The story that my mom likes to tell about him being the spiritual leader of our family was that um, he... Uh, we were at the Methodist church, and nothing against Methodist church, but the, the Methodist pastor was standing in the, front, in the front from the pulpit, and he was giving some some message about something, and my dad was like, okay, enough. So he walks, my dad walks out to the front, smokes a cigarette, because he's like, I'm done, which probably may have been part of the cause of this whole thing, right? No, um, he, was t he smokes a cigarette, and then he walks back in, looks at the five of us sitting like halfway up to all the pews, points to each one of us and says, we're out. Middle of the past, middle of the service. <clears throat> he didn't much appreciate that particular service, apparently. Um, and so we, we left. And the next weekend, we went and uh, started uh, meeting with a group, that, a tape group for um, Colonel Thing and, and uh, Baraka. And uh, that was the beginning of, of our love for the Word of God. And so I will give my dad, and I will always cherish the fact that he... Uh, that he did that. And so I wouldn't be standing here today under the the teaching of Pat. Well, the good Lord knew how to get me here, apparently. But um, he used my father in that. So I, I, we are all joyful. We all feel very good that he has, he has passed. He's in a good place. And my mom, um, my mom is in a great place. So there's a lot of joy in her heart, although she misses her, the love of her life. So uh, enough on that. Um, thank you for all the prayers. And please keep my mom in prayer. Uh, we're going to talk to some more prayers that we, uh, we're we looking for from everybody. And this is the Slam Breakthrough 2021. Our theme this year was Unashamed. And it was very uh, appropriate in so many ways, and we're going to talk to those. But uh, the, the verse uh, for Unashamed this year was uh, Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So we'll be in prayer for your uh, um, your conversation with Saul. I was mentioning to Larry, I said, is that is that Saul that turns into Paul, or is that Saul that turns into the king? We know what our prayer is, right? Um, so it's interesting to have those conversations. Uh, but it was a great weekend, and, and I don't want to go into a bunch of of detail around all the activities and things. I'm going to actually ask Ryan to come up here in a second to talk to it. To, to maybe one of her, her favorite stories and then the staff. Um, Lori's out of town. She's actually meeting with uh, a group of kids that came to Breakthrough last weekend and they're going to church this morning. Uh, ben and, and several of his friends. And um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But I do want to make sure, because y'all, between your prayers, your your financial support, the things that you do, we can't can't do this without the support of, of this small, humble body. Uh, we, trust me, we took a lot more kids, young people, to slam than there are people sitting in this church today. Uh, and there were a lot of folks that were involved in this as well uh, to make this thing happen. So can you guys see this generally? All right, I probably need to get better contrast. Um, who was there? So I'll talk to you a little bit about who was there. The saved, the lost, those that were in the light, those that were living in the darkness, those that were full of joy, and those that were sad, stress, anxiety, and depression. Every single person there, in some way or another, was searching. And it was awesome. It was awesome. The conversations that were going on, and we, what we had, how we had set this up, this was the first year we had done it with the college students, or the college age students. They weren't all in college, uh, so i got to be careful about that. But it was the first time we'd ever had this group there and we had a dozen college age kids and we had um, 27 high schoolers. Uh, we had folks that came down from Oklahoma. So we had kids that I'm just going to call them kids, whatever. Um, we had kids that were coming down from Oklahoma. We had uh, Texas A&M. We had Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, um, Collin College. And then we had some that were just living out on their own. Some of them from rough situations while they were living on their own. Others that were, um, you know, they were thriving. Uh, we had 27 high schoolers from Plano, Wiley, Oklahoma City. The Oklahoma contingent is coming in in force, y'all. Uh, Ray and Eric Ward are um, 
my brother and sister-in-law, um, they are spreading the word and they are very involved in this ministry with us, which is fantastic because y'all remember it started in Tulsa, then it moved to Texas, hoorah, and then it moves, now it's starting to, you know, this whole thing. So God is going where God wants it to go. And it's a, it's an awesome thing. Um, the staff that were on site, so Lori, Larry, and Ray, uh, were there, Brian, myself, and, uh, Nick Forrest. Nick runs all of our technical stuff for us. So you guys don't, you've met him a couple. He's the big burly dude with the, the facial, you know, facial hair. He looks like Grady Jr. Um, just more facial hair and more hair on his head, right? Um, if you guys remember Grady, so that's um, Cameron and Addie were involved this this past weekend. Phil and Pat were involved. Those were the folks that were physically there. Did I miss anybody physically there? And then obviously, uh, there's so much support that comes from here with uh, what's going on with uh, Leslie and Terry uh, and the, the administrative side of things that that happen. Trust me, we don't make it easy on anybody from the standpoint of. Literally, like the day before, if somebody wants to come to camp and come to this, everything's set up, all the, and we say, oh, sure, show up, come on, let's get your paperwork filled out. And, and so it becomes challenging to, uh, to, uh, Terry and Leslie. Uh, so thank you all for, for the administrative side of this, because it's, it's not easy work. And we, like I say, we don't make it easy, um, because we've never turned a kid away. Uh, to this day, we have not turned somebody away from coming to camp. Uh, if they want to come, I don't care if they show up. We have one kid that, uh, one young man that, that was, uh, supposed to come and then he, his, his, uh, company told him he needed to go out of town. So he went out of town and he showed it. He calls me on Saturday afternoon at, uh, I guess it's three or four o'clock and says, Hey, I'm back in town. Can I come? And I said, he said, what do I need to, how much do I need to pay? What do I need? I said, just, just come, just come. And he came and he was part of it for the weekend, the rest of the weekend, which was awesome. Uh, we had a special guest that joined us this uh, time. His name was Dylan Chase. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple. I'm not going to play his music. Um, <laughs> but I am going to show you a couple pictures. You'll see uh, Dylan Chase is a is a mus musician, and his genre of music is Christian rap. And so I know that's why I won't play it in here. I might have a lot of people walk out. Um but he is phenomenal, and I had an opportunity to talk to Dylan several times throughout the weekend. He is solid. Uh, I want to put him on our on our missions ministry um, list because this 35 years old, he's been in the music industry for 15 years or so. He had a hard upbringing, um, and I'll have to at some point maybe we can get him in here and he can share his story, but. Um, but no music. No music. Yes. <laughs> we made Pat didn't come till I mean, we made Pat leave early. <laughs> we were afraid we'd hear that for the rest of the time. No. Um, but his his message is solid. He 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 took our. I'll, I'll talk to you guys about this in a second. Um, he he took our binders and and he went through the whole thing. And y'all, oh by the way, this is our binder that we taught out of. For the, all the kids got one of these. And um, all the staff, and and he went through the binder and he talked to me on on uh, his family came up. He's got three little kids, one of them's autistic, a little uh, four year old boy who's autistic, and then his two other girls. The the, the uh, youngest, uh, the oldest girl, who was six, seven. seven, she ran all of his computer stuff uh, while he was doing his concert for us on uh, Saturday night. It was cool, uh, DJ Grace. Um, he was blown away at, at the at the level of, of study that we do. He said, he said he does the camp circuits through the summers and spring. So he he goes all over the place to do this. He says, yeah, I usually see like this much of the word, and then all of this is like nothing. It's fluff. It's let's go do fun stuff. He said, you guys were like started here, and then you added fun stuff down here at the bottom. Um, but he, we were talking about exegetical teaching, and uh, he's trained, and he's he and his family are looking to go to Japan, uh, one of the darkest places in the world right now with regards to the gospel and understanding the truth. And he and his family are, are working their way uh, through the support of uh, the Baptist um, missionaries groups to, to try to get over to Japan. So he's looking at taking his three girls, 
I mean, his, his two girls and his autistic son to uh, Japan to be a missionary in Japan. And so uh, we're, we're looking at financially supporting him as well on that. Um, I want to show some pictures in a second, but I'd love, Ryan, can you come up and tell me, you know, give us a story about something cool that happened over the weekend, and uh, and then I'm going to ask, actually, Ryan and Larry to to say something as well, if you can. I didn't tell you. <laughs> almost almost <laughs> again. <laughs> um, yeah, so the weekend was, it was pretty awesome. Um, just being like a senior, like this was my last time being like a slam camper, so... Um, my group this year was just like really cool. Um, the Oklahoma people are awesome and we always love to see them because we only get to see them twice a year. So, um, but like, I think one of the coolest things we did was um, they had us break into like pairs and pray together. Um, so that was really awesome. And then our devotion, like every day we've been texting each other and saying like, make sure you do to your devotion. Um, so that was also Really awesome. It was just a great weekend. How many years have you been going to Slam? Oh. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> what age do you start going to Slam? Oh, well, eight, back seventh then. grade when you started. So. Yeah. Probably six, six years, years, maybe. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And what was your role like this year versus those others? Um, so I was a team leader this year. So basically, I was in charge of like a. Um, like one team, it was me, um, Emily Martin, and Alexis Pierkowski. I don't know if you guys know any of them, but um, they've been my friends for a long time. So we got to be, we were all in charge of the group. Lauren Clements was also part of my group. And um, so we worked together to kind of um, plan a Bible study and plan an activity. And my group was like really awesome. Uh, they all, I was not expecting them. We had a Zoom call. Um, before slam usually we have the planning meetings we didn't get to do that this year um, so it was a different year because I was hoping that I would get to meet all of them before slam but I didn't get to do that but on our zoom call I mean like no one talked and I was like oh great like I'm gonna have to do everything this weekend um, but as soon as we got there we sat down as a group I had never met half these people in my life Jamie Ward I knew Jamie and that was about it um, and so we sat down and I mean like they all just started talking and like giving me ideas. And I was like, wow, I cannot be any happier because I did not want to like have to talk the whole time. So, um, and I think that was the case for all of them. So, yeah. Question, did you have any younger campers in your group? Like the seventh and eighth graders? Yeah, we had, so oh. it was really weird. Every single person in my group had never been to slam camp except for me and Lauren. So that was also why oh, I was a little, that, right? I was a little concerned. <laughs> Um, yeah, on our Zoom call, I was like, has anyone ever been to Slam Camp? And um, they all shook their heads like this because no one unmuted their microphones for the whole <laughs> Zoom call. Um, but they all just looked at me and they were like this. I was like, has anyone been to Summer Camp? And they were like, and I was like, okay, well, that's good. Um, at least you know some people, I guess. So, but, so you got to apply your leadership skills that you've learned in the past camp. Yeah, it was, awesome. it was really cool. And it also, like, I think it prepared... Um, me and Lauren, I just want to say, Lauren did a really good job this weekend. Um, she was just a really good leader, so I was proud of her. But I think that it helped both of us to be ready for to be a counselor this summer because um, we were not junior counselors last year because we decided we wanted to be campers for one more year um, <laughs> because we're just kids like that. But um, so, yeah, I think we're both really excited to be able to like take on that role this summer. But yeah, it was a really awesome weekend, so. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Apologies for all of the microphone noises. We transfer these back and forth. So I'll say, fix it. No okay, no, yeah, all right. So you guys will never hear that. Um, so I wanted to see, I want to see if I can get this to work. I want to talk to, I want to show some pictures here. So give me just, uh-oh. So I'm going to talk to a couple of these. I'm not going to, we don't have a big slideshow we'll put together or anything, but I want us to, uh, to get an opportunity to just talk to some of these pictures because it kind of tells the story. And Brian and Larry, I'd love for you guys to weigh in if you want to add any commentary or anything to these. I'm not going to go through all of them. But this is our full group. 
and you can see we had we had a lot of people there. Wow. It was fun. I mean, this was Friday. This is Dylan Chase and his family. This is most of the breakthrough team over here, and then they were kind of spread out across. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, uh, we got a variety of people there. I mean, you name it. They come from different backgrounds. It was it was awesome, and and they were they were excited to be there. You know, one of the blessings of of this COVID thing is that when these kids do have the opportunity to get together, they're really excited about getting together. I mean, the energy level is is huge. They are so tired of being locked up and and isolated, and 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 this was. I mean, you want to talk about a spiritual and mental health uh, weekend? This was it. This was awesome. And so I'm going to switch to this side, actually. Sorry for moving back and forth here. But, um, and, and you can see Larry and Brian. They always get their, their beautiful picture in there. And they're just, and, and now I'm, I'm just playing. Uh, no, it is a, it's an awesome picture. And, it's, you know, it's really cool to be able to, to be a part of this with our kids. I mean, these are our kids. The, the, all of them are our kids now. But our kids are there. And, and it's a, it's an honor and it is a, it's so exciting. We had, uh, we got to do s'mores on Friday night. Uh, nothing like giving, uh, 39, 40 kids pointy sticks and tell them to go stand around the fire and see what happens. Right? Well, they did great. They did great. Nobody, nobody got impaled. We didn't have any flying marshmallows that were on fire or any of that kind of stuff. So it was a lot of fun. But before that, I had a friend of mine. And that came out and gave the gospel. And it was really cool because he brought his daughter with him. And their family are going through a big challenge with regards to their daughter. We've been in prayer for her. Her name is Autumn. And she's got lung cancer. And she's um, 18, 19 years old. She's had lung cancer for the last couple of years. Please continue to be in prayer. As we go through this, please um, listen to these prayer requests and write them down and, and, and pray for these kids. Because there are so many things that these kids are going through, whether well, their, their daughter, uh, Brooke, not Autumn, their daughter, Brooke, their older daughter came with him and, and he gave the gospel. Um, and it sparked tons of fun questions, amazing questions. And then she spoke for a couple of minutes with regards. She's a Texas tech. She's getting ready. She's in nursing school, getting ready to graduate. And she spoke about the pain and suffering that she was going through with her sister being diagnosed with cancer. Her dad had never heard that before. She had never opened up about, and these kids, the, the rest of the group, they stopped talking to, to Blake and turned and started talking to her and having these conversations and encouraging and how did you get through it and what were you, and, and it was all being pointed back to, to you lean on God, you find your church family and you, you support each other. And, and it was, it was awesome. Um, and don't be, don't be ashamed of the burdens you're carrying. That's what God's for. That's what he does. He takes care of those things. And it was just, it was crazy. So that actually, that's, I guess, what this picture represents. Well, it was right before everybody got down there. And the other thing is that took place on Friday night within three and a half yeah. to four hours of them arriving at camp. Yeah. So that night broke down all the walls immediately. Where it usually it takes a bit of time, it was done. We could move on now. Yeah. It was awesome. Um I'm just like I said, I'm not going to go through all of these. The coffee shop was popular when you when they go to bed at two in the morning and wake up at seven thirty. Coffee shop is very popular, so that's what's going on here is the coffee shop. Well, and the cool part about that is the money for all the coffee goes to the people that run the camp. Their son is a missionary in Honduras, so that all the proceeds go there. So, you know, love supporting that. Yep. Um, and just different pictures, some activities and stuff that were going on. These are all the families. The yeah, these families. are the different families that we had. So we break them up teams, families. That's we call them families. That, yeah. And uh, and each of the families has a leader. Uh, in this case, Ryan was talking about her team, uh, her family, which <clears throat> if I put my glasses on, I could probably tell which one was yours. It's the left. Yeah, this one right here? Yeah. So this is her, her family. Um, and just like I say, a... a just a diverse group of people who come from all kinds of different backgrounds. Um, we've got folks that these are college age, uh, young men and women, this is just, in this case, young women. And uh, they came from A&M. They came from uh, Oklahoma. Uh, we got to do some zip lining. So overcoming some fears. <laughs> That's a riot. Um, 
So doing a little zip lining and playing some games and here you can see him flying. And then these were all the, not all of them, but this is a group that, that had all gone on the zip line together at the same time, at, at, in the same time frame. And then here you can see where... Yeah, Chris, back up just a second. So they each had to do a, an activity together, not to get into each of the activities like Chris said, but we asked them to put a twist on their activity and perhaps tie it some way to their Christian walk. These guys nailed it. I mean, every, that... Per, Ryan, what was your activity? You guys played uh, we wiffle played, ball. Yeah, we played wiffle ball, but it was like everything that was supposed to be like right was wrong. So like they had to run backwards. The bases were backwards. You had to hit with your opposite hand. Yeah, was what was fun. the intention? How was that? It was tied in because we said that like the way that like the world tells us is like opposite of what Christ wants us to do so often and this was uh they were tied together and i'm not i don't remember what emily said about I don't that. Remember. but they had they were connected with another person to play this game uh they had limitations i know that was part of it and they had to rely on each other to to make it so anyway each of them had these things and none of them found this a struggle they were very effective at communicating their christian walk in these activities and making them more fun for everybody and then Turn up the volume and turn on the lights because uh, it was party time. Um, this is where this is in the afternoon on uh, on the evening, excuse me, on Saturday where Dylan was was rocking and rolling. It's not really rock and roll; it's rap, but you know what I mean. Um, it was great, and it was it was an amazing uh, concert. It was so cool because he interacts with them and tells gives his witness and gives his story and talks to them about. Uh, what these the messages in these songs and so uh it was it was pretty phenomenal to uh to hear him do that and i think you guys had a good time with with that yeah um and is that their little one yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's that's his littlest daughter and she would not let go of me <laughs> <laughs> so it was cool because he brought his whole family and they stayed for the whole weekend and they got to be a part. They got to participate in a, in a bunch of stuff, and it was it was fun to have them there. And then we had um, the, this is where they our slam teams, our high schoolers, were given a passage, and we constantly are going back to what, so what, now what, right? The observation, interpretation, application, and we teach it and teach it and teach it and teach it. Um, I don't know that I have access, but at the end here, once we're we're finished, I'll play, I'll see if I can play a video from. Uh, Francis Chen was the gentleman's name. He's a he's a big mega church pastor. But he was talking about in China, the uh, underground churches were the things that were because they were already in an underground church environment. When when the communists came in and everything was going crazy and they started being persecuted more and more, the the church thrived. It thrived because people knew how to how to interpret and how to how to uh, understand and how to read the the Bible and how to how to do those things versus in the Soviet Union, they had these monstrous cathedrals and one person stood up in the front and they were the only one that knew anything about anything. And they went in there and, and they told you what you needed to know. And, and you walked out and whatever happens, but these, everything was around the cathedral. Everything was around the, the priest at the front of the cathedral. And when the communists came in and everything got slammed shut, Christianity went because nobody knew what to do. And so we are constantly wanting to teach these young people. Now, obviously Christ. I mean, obviously God knows how to how to fix all of those things. So I'm not talking about that. We're, but we're teaching them to be filled with the Spirit. Learn how to how to read your Bible. Learn how to interpret. I mean, learn how to observe. And we spend a lot of time observing. Was that a fun activity or what? You're like, okay, everybody's looking at each other. Going, I don't understand what this means. Um, but it was it was really cool to be able to do that. So and then they presented out on Sunday uh, Sunday morning for that. So. Uh, let me get on back to Chris. Hang on. Yeah, look that very last picture right there. This Just, one. Uh huh. So this group of kids after camp has, if I'm not mistaken, created their own um, communication group, and they are holding each other accountable for where's the binder for doing these incredible devotions that Herman referred to earlier that Lori put together for them. So that each day they have a 30-day plan of a devotion to continue to work on their um, fellowship and relationship with the Lord and each other. And so I just, you know, this goes far beyond this weekend. 
Um, these are these are things these kids are building for their future. These are all pretty much seniors that are leaving juniors, some of them. And in addition to that, at our youth group on at our house for the rest of the year, those seniors now are teaching each other's Bible studies with our overseeing, but they're doing um, observation, interpretation, and application so that they can go on and lead for college and know how to do this themselves and lead others to the Lord. So I just wanted, you know, I, I, it was a great foot stepping stone foundation this weekend. Far, far more than what I've even seen in any of the other weekends that we've done like this. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. So um, I'm going to go through this quickly. Not, uh, I'm not going to teach, but I wanted to make sure. You, part of the in, the reason that we give these these re, uh, these uh, kind of presentations of what's going on is y'all spend. Lots and lots of time praying. Lots and lots of money comes out of this congregation that supports all of this. So I want you to understand what's being taught, right? It's one of the most interesting things for me is when, when a kid, a young person shows up either to our youth ministry uh, at, at our houses or they come to a slam camp or they come to a, a summer camp when their parents have never asked a question, what do you teach? Right? What is it that you're teaching these kids? Um, and I want to make sure you all know because we we have the the blessing of having a, a pastor teacher that that teaches the truth and and really goes back to the Bible. And that's what we tell all of these young people is is when we're telling you these things or showing, make sure wherever you go, you you ask them to show it to you. In in our youth uh, in our youth group the other night, we were talking about some things and. And one of the uh, young people started making this comment about, well, what about this and this and this and this? And I said, well, show it to me in the Bible. Because they were off base, right? And when we got to it in the Bible, they recognized that's not true. What they're being told is not true. So it's it's not here. We don't want to hear it within reason, right? Um, and so what we were teaching this past weekend was, the, one, the gospel and we all that's the mission of our of our youth ministry is to, to spread the gospel to the world one child at a time. That's what that's our focus. That's what we do. So every single time we get a group of these kids together, the gospel is going to be presented every single time. And so we spent time in the gospel and then we spent time unashamed of the gospel, which Phil taught on. And do you want to add any of what you what you talked about, Phil, um, with regards to unashamed of the gospel? I was I was just. I, I, come up here, start breaking me. I want to talk long. He just wants the microphone. <laughs> I I just want to tell you how how impressed I was at the depth that these kids got into the word. You know, uh, I taught a couple of passages, and uh, uh, for the uh, uh, high school kids, I gave them some Philippians passages and broke them into groups, and we and they talked about it, and then then we came up and discussed that. And then I got to do the breakout group with the, the college kids. And uh, I had, uh, I think, 45 minutes on the time slot. And we were supposed to do the same thing. I was going to talk to them about a few verses. And then we were going to break up and look at some verses. And uh, uh, they were asking me questions one after another as I talked to them, just talking about uh, the, the, the target passage in Romans 6, uh, 6, 8, 16, or 2, 16. And uh, uh, they were asking me questions. They were getting answers on how to how to read how to study the Bible, God, uh, the Word of God. Uh, they they then I gave them some passages to look at. They turned right around and used that and, and uh, applying it. And some of them had not heard it before. This was the, the college group was so amazing. One, it's amazing that kids who had been our, in our slam program for years couldn't let it go. Even they're all they're all grown up and, and gone off to college. So many kids just leave their church behind when they do that. They couldn't let it go. They had to come back and be a part of it. And the second amazing thing about it is they all brought somebody with them. Can, can, can you imagine? It, you know, not only did they say, "Hey, I still want to be a part of this. I want I want somebody to to, to be a part of it with me," and they all. Uh, taught one another and they all examined the word of God and it was it was phenomenal to to, to see the depth at which they looked at it and they they were not fooled I, it was so funny with one girl she had a, like a study bible 
and uh, she was uh, 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 talking in a group when we were listening to them, and 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 Pat heard what she was saying, and she she said, "Do you hear what that girl saying?" And and she was reading something in a comment on the from the study Bible on the side, and and Pat was like, "You got to get in there, you got to get in there," and the little girl stopped and said. That's not the word of God, and and recognize she was in the in the margin. And, and she, she, you know, God the Holy Spirit tapped her on the shoulder and said, "Up, nope, that that isn't the part of the Bible. You need to get over back over here." And 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 she made a correct application of that passage. Uh, I taught the high school kids uh, in Philippians a, a very problematic passage: "Work out your sa- salvation with fear and trembling," and and they were like. You know, they, they do great observation. They read it. They, they look at, it, at what's going on in the passages around it. And, and often, like, like we, we, we come mainly to church for interpretation, right? And, uh, like in the same way, they, they, they struggled in finding the right thing in an interpretation, but they recognized that there was something wrong when they said, work out my salvation with fear and trembling. What's going on here? Pastor Phil, tell, yeah, they were like, tell us what's going on here. What's up with this word? They, they knew that something about interpretation was breaking down because working out yourself did not align with what they knew, what they had believed about the word of God. That was phenomenal. <laughs> to see them go into that much of a depth and to uh, uh, seek the truth of the word of God, it's, it's priceless. It's phenomenal to see God, the Holy Spirit, work in these young people. And uh, it's, it's worth every bit of, of work and sacrifice that God calls us to do to make these things happen. And uh, we got to keep it going somehow. Tell the people the three things you show with the, how to study the Bible. Well, uh, we've started, I think it was our second slam camp that we started. Uh, uh, it's the, the basic rules of studying the Bible. Really, it's, they're, it's true for any literature. You uh, observe what's going on there. You get the historical background. You uh, understand where they're coming from in writing that, that, that uh, whatever it is they're written. And then you interpret it in the, in the time in which it was written and, and understanding what they're, they're trying to say about it. And then you seek an application. Uh, how does it apply to my life? And we, we've kind of broken that down in simplistic terms of what's here, what, uh, now what? You interpret it, and now you know what's there, what do you, what, what, how do you understand it? And then so what? What are you going to do about it, right? And that's that's how we explain it to the kids, what, so what, now, uh, and now what? And uh, uh, Give an example of that, of what y'all did, what you did with it. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, for every passage, we give them, uh, uh, like they, they were given passages that they did their uh, uh, presentation on. They linked their activity to it. And they did that as their group for themselves on their passage. They uh, observed it. They discussed it. They talked about how they could apply it and how, how they could illustrate that application with the game, right? Yeah. And And when I teach them, I give them a passage right then they've never seen before. And uh, 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 they break into small groups, and we all walk, walk, go around and make sure that they they they're staying on the right path. And and there's one thing I've never had to tell them. Okay, guys, settle down, get back into you know, talk about the Bible again. Okay, you're you're messing around. I have never done that one time in in these slam camps. They stay on task. I don't have to tell them. All right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, get up, get back in the Bible. They are talking about the Bible and 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 seeking to uh, observe and and get what's on there. They ask me great questions in 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 both observation and interpretation. And once they once they see that and the power of the Spirit, they run with application <laughs> like nobody's business. It's it's it's. I, I wish I could get half of you adults to do. <laughs> The way that they do, okay, and uh, uh, that they are are so in, in in looking to see how does this uh, how does how can I apply this in my life, okay, and that's the that's the phenomenal part of Alp Slam Camp. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, okay. sir. All right. I'm glad you weren't excited. <laughs> yeah, it's it's terrible that we have to get Phil excited about teaching. <laughs> um, he's got a gift for these kids, and so the, the so that's the gospel, the unashamed, 
of the gospel. It's the power of God for salvation. And then we spoke about unashamed because of the gospel. And uh, I had the, the pleasure of teaching that. And, and one of the things that we were talking about, so one of them was, was really getting into uh, a level of detail, which was pretty amazing to be talking about both sides of the uh, both sides of the cross, right? Sins are taken care of. And man, the questions that came out of that were, were phenomenal. Oh, what do you mean all sins are? Okay, well, then why isn't everybody going to heaven? And I mean, we spent a lot of time uh, talking about that, clarifying that it's all about, um, it, it, it's all about faith and that our faith that we're not, we are not righteous before God because Christ died on the cross. We're righteous before God. He took care of the price on the cross but our salvation comes from this fact that we accept the righteousness of God into us at the point of salvation. We receive it, right? We, we accept Christ as our Savior, and the gift is righteousness. And that's where we, um, and that's where it kind of led to the unashamed because of the gospel. I'm going to read to you all, um, because I'm not going to turn this back over to Herman since uh, I'm going to teach for a minute. So, um, in Romans 4. Uh, if you look at Romans 4, verses uh, 1 through 8 was one of the passages that we talked about. And I'll give you guys a second to turn there because I wanted you to see it in the Bible. Because <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> and it says, What then will we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, is found? If Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Now to the one who works, pay is not credited as a gift, but as something owed. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who declares the ungodly to be righteous, his faith is credited for righteousness. This is the Christian Standard Bible that I'm reading from, so apologies if you are looking at something else there, right? Verse 6, just as David also speaks of the blessing of the person to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Verse 7, blessed are those whose lawless acts are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the person the Lord will never charge with sin. Unashamed because of the gospel. Y'all, these, we all, I'm not going to say these kids. The world carries the, the burden of sin on their shoulders every single day. And we run around and we're in stress. We're in anxiety. We're in depression. We have suicide. You know, people have suicidal thoughts. They want to end their lives because of the shame and the, the sin and the, 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 just carrying these burdens in front of the world. And the whole conversation is about no. If you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have been credited God's righteousness. You don't have the right to carry shame. You give it up. Give it back to God. He's big enough. He took care of it. And the part of the conversation with, and I spent a lot of time with the, uh, the college uh, group, but really getting to understand the sin is taken care of. It's all paid for. The righteousness that we're given is a gift. Don't call God a liar and go back on the fact that you need to do something to clear up your righteousness. You can't do it. And when we get that in our heads and we get that through our minds and the epinosis of that information, that the wisdom that we understand from that because of, of the Holy Spirit living inside of us, then we can live our lives unashamed because of the gospel. We can live our lives unashamed because of the fact that God paid the price, that Christ paid the Christ paid the price on the cross, and our sins are covered. And blessed is the person the Lord will never charge with sin. We had conversations about the great white throne judgment and the and the judgment seat of Christ and getting them to understand sin will never be brought up before God again, ever, because Christ paid for all of it. Now, what are you going to stand before God at the great white throne judgment and say? I believed or I didn't. And oh, by the way, if you've believed, you're not there. But we had to get them done. We had to get the, both sides of the thing. But one thing at a time, right? So you got to take this in pieces. And so unashamed because of the gospel, we are positionally in Christ and getting them to understand that. I mean, you want to go to a church around here which it talks about being positionally in Christ and being unashamed because of your position in Christ. Good luck. I hope we find a whole lot more of those. Because 
they understood it. They got it. They asked questions and the conversations were awesome. And, and in the high schoolers, you know, there was something that was said with regards to surrender. And the question came up, well, what do we mean you got to surrender to be saved? Beautiful question. And we spent lots of time because these kids know it. They know the truth. You say something wrong about the gospel and they're going to call you on it. Um, that's a warning to anybody who wants to come talk to them about stuff. right? Um, and it was awesome. And so I, I know where they came from. And, and the solid teaching. And so that's what some of the things we talked about with the ki- uh, the, the high, sorry, the college kids. Uh, break down, break apart, break up before a breakthrough, who we are in Christ. I love this. Anytime you're going through something and, and it feels like you're falling apart and, and it feels like there's a breakup getting ready to happen or a breakdown or a break apart, stand by. Those are required to have a breakthrough. If everything is good, you're never going to have a breakthrough. You're just going to keep on keeping on. Everything's good. Just keep on keeping on. When things start to fall apart and we're stressed, and thus Romans, the, it, this is this is my summary of Romans 5, right? Um, the, the part where it, rejoice in your tribulations because it, it it's the breakthrough, the breakthrough to understand that God's love is our hope and what he did for us in, through his son in the resurrection next week. Yes. 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 <laughs> Um, the importance of God's word was a round table that we had. Uh, and when I say round tables, we weren't up teaching. We were up opening the Bible and talking through them with them. They were talking through this. And the college kids, my gosh, I mean, they, apparently they can talk forever. Because um, <laughs> Phil said, yeah, I had 45 minutes. I think it was an hour and a half when we got done. Yes. Um, but it was 45 minutes of a lot of time and an hour and a half worth of discussion. So it was awesome. And then the last one was prayer and worship. And then I wanted to talk to you for just a second with regards to the 30 day challenge. And so uh, one of the things that we were looking at was how do we, how do we take something that goes beyond um, the, the weekend and, and they can do something with, especially we were really looking at initially because of the, the college kids that are going off all over the place. And we don't know what, what, how do we give them something to work on? And so it's, it's a 30 days to make a habit. That's kind of the, the, the thought process there. And so we gave them 30 days and the first two days we started at camp, right? This was Saturday, this was Sunday, and then they picked it up and got a chance to go. And it's reading the Gospels by the time Easter comes around, Resurrection Sunday comes around, right? So the, the follow-up on this is, is the first 10 days is get to, the, get to the resurrection. Read the Gospels, the resurrection, get there. And then what do we do beyond that? And, and we're talking about leading in prayer. And each one of these has like a, this is the overview, that's day one, right? And there's 30 days of this. And so it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome to give them the opportunity to have something to take away. And if somebody leaves their folder over on the, you know, the mantle or whatever, or the window or whatever at the, at the library, somebody can pick this up and go. Yeah. I can pick it up and go. And so that was really cool. Um, prayer, study, worship, lots of prayer time. We spent a lot of time in prayer and grouping them together to do prayer. Uh, and then fi- helping them find their church. Um, that's one of the biggest challenges. And one of the one of the 30 day challenge things is on Friday. Have you called anybody to go to church to see if they want to go to church with you on Saturday? OK, have you scheduled you're going to I mean, some of these are very tactical. Like, hey, have you called your friend to see if you guys are going which is nine o'clock service or 10 o'clock service? Which one are you going to and go? And so Sundays is, hey, go to church. We want to plug these kids back into into a local congregation so that they can serve and be fed and uh, uh, and and do those things. So, specific prayer requests, and I'll wrap up here because I know we've taken more time than I anticipated. Um, encouragement, please be in prayer for all of all of these uh, young people and the staff and and everybody that's involved with and y'all. Please be in prayer for encouragement. We are all in the battle. Please be in prayer that they can stand firm in the truth. That's that's what we're we're teaching, and we're we're hoping that they can, uh, you know, praying that they will be able to uh, to stand firm in what they know to be true. Brokenness, turn to the Lord. Give up the shame, the depression, the anxiety. Give it up to the Lord. If we understand who we are positionally in Christ, and our righteousness is from God and not from our own works, then we have no right to be ashamed. We have no right to be in depression and anxiety and 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 stress. But y'all, we have it. It's not a kid problem. It's not a college problem. It's a people problem. Every single one of us. We're broken. 
we're we're all broken, and at times that brokenness overwhelms us, and at times that brokenness is put aside and given to God. And that we need to spend more time through the filling of the Spirit and understanding that. And a specific prayer request, please um, please convict all of us to seek Him every day. That's the that's the prayer I have for for all of us, and and specifically these young people. Is God, please convict us to seek You every day. I pray that they use the 30-day challenge to spark the, in their hearts all who will take it on. Get in there. Pull them closer to you, God. That's the request. And in, in closing, I'd like to tell you a, a short story, a quick story. Um, there's a young man that is uh, Ben's roommate, and his name is Brody. He is the nicest young man you would ever meet. I mean, it doesn't matter. We could be in the middle of a pandemic and, oh, we are. Um, we could be in the middle of a hurricane. We could be in the middle of a storm and the smile never leaves his face. He's just a joy to be around. And when he came, Ben's been talking to him for, well, they've been roommates for a year and a half now. And Ben was talking to him about the, the gospel and he started being curious. Again, unbelievable. No, no foundation of this in their home. What parents are wonderful. We we like them a lot. Lauren, I've uh, gotten to know them a little bit. No foundation in the home, and he said, "I want to go to this breakthrough thing with y'all." And so he came, and um, he he got the gospel. He was actively engaged in all the conversations. We were given communion on Sunday morning. I have not had a conversation with Brody where he said. I absolutely believe this. I haven't had that conversation. But I know Lori's down there with them today and they're all going to church together. And so please be in prayer for Brody, specifically by name, that the Lord will not let him go and that he comes to know Christ as his Savior. I don't know that it's done yet, but man, the, the angels will be a celebrating. <laughs> he is a, he's a wonderful young man. And there are so many others, y'all. There are so many others. I, we don't know who know, who's believed, who hasn't, right? Um, so please be in prayer that all these young people will continue to be pursued by the Lord, uh, which we know. It's, it's great praying things that we know are going to, that he's already going to do, but we're supposed to pray him anyway, right? And so that's, that's the uh, wrap up for this. I'll, we'll close in prayer. But I want to, anybody have any questions or, or yes, sir? Okay, first of all, who put together the... Lori. Number two, can others in this church get a copy? Yeah, we have an electronic copy. They're pretty pricey to print, um, but we can get a... If we want, if I can get a certain number of people to want them in print, I can do that. I just don't want to print... 75 of them and then but we can put the electronic copy on the, the link sorry. to it yeah I have that. okay yeah just send me that either the link or the uh, document itself i have that. Okay. I'll send it to you. awesome thank you we'll yeah. pdf that yeah the <clears throat> name one more time the singer that we're gonna that was here with the three children dylan yeah. chase and chase how did he come um the short version of the story is laura and i went up to see our nephew, uh, his name is Henry Ward. That's Ray and Eric's son. He goes. His stage name is Hennest. He is a he is trying to break into the Christian rap um, scene as well. And so we went up to a concert to support him. He was doing a concert. Well, Dylan was the main act uh, at the concert. It was pretty funny. Here's Lori and I and Ray and Eric standing in the back of this concert, and there was probably. 100 people there maybe and we're standing in the back like I'll say this in all humility these these old white people standing in the back going <laughs> no, it, um, it, it was actually wonderful uh, listening to getting the chance to hear Dylan's witness and everything so we got to see him and then Hen, uh, Henry put us in contact Ray and Eric put us in contact with Dylan and we asked him if he'd be a part and he said yeah okay uh you get a chance. You might even go to church. Okay. To sing. Oh, no. He's a rat. To talk. No. I know what he is. Give the opportunity. Let him see what the church is like that sponsored this. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we will. <clears throat> I'll bring your plugs. <laughs>
I've never seen well, I'm in acapella, right? And you do it. Is that what they call it in rap? We're singing without music? All right. Yes, sir, I will. Um, he is, I know he's incredibly busy and trying to figure no, out, but no, we'll, we'll make the offer. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is not to do with camp, but just to mention the flower fundraiser closes on oh, yeah. the 31st. Please yeah. get your orders in because it's closing on, and we can't go past the 31st. <coughs> okay. And then if anybody wants to buy one of our camp uh, unashamed t-shirts, Dalton was able to be a part of this on the front end for us when we were in the creative process and did our artwork for the t-shirts. So um, we can, if you want one, I have some in the back. Awesome. And right here. Right um, Sorry. so the details are giving you guys the understanding of what we do and, and how important it is. Uh, you got everybody in this church at some point continues to pray and financially support and, and do whatever they can to make this continue. So I wanted to encourage you all to continue to do that. We do that through the flower fundraisers. We do that through the, uh, um, the other fundraisers that we have. That's how we financially support. And please continue to be in prayer for all these young people and in this ministry. Uh, if you all have, we're getting ready to, camp is open, right? Registration for camp is open. We made these cards, and I'll put some of these in the back. If you've got people that you know, neighbors that have kids that are fourth grade to 12th grade, give them one of these. Take one. They're cool because they're not your standard business card, so they don't get filed. They, they kind of stick out, right? If you stick them in your purse, you're going to stick your hand on it eventually. <clears throat> but it's got... Um, it's got our libertyyouthministries.com website on here, It's which they can go and get all the information with regards to CAM. It talks about Liberty Youth Ministries and you know, our our mantra verse, right? And our, our verse is, it's freedom that, that Christ has set us, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery, Galatians 5.1. And so they can, get, uh, they can get the information from the website. They can register at the website. If you know people, uh, we have lots of staff that want to come serve. In fact, we have an incredible amount of staff that want to come serve. Now we need the incredible number of campers to come be served. Um, and we have lots of space for campers. We do. We can take we can take two hundred people. Yeah. We can take two hundred people. And so uh, beyond that, oh, we have to figure out. I just need to know that it's on. We're going to go over two hundred. I need somebody else to do this. No, I'm kidding. Um, anyway, any other questions, y'all? Thank you for your time this morning and your patience to get through this. I Hopefully it was uh, informational and uh, somewhat encouraging to, to know that uh, this ministry continues to thrive. Thank you and, very much. Um, I left only 12 minutes for Herman to finish the other 17 pages you got on that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, do you want to say anything else, Pastor Maddox? Yes, thank you very much. Absolutely. So let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time this morning. We just thank you for the opportunity to be involved with this ministry. It's your ministry. Father, we turn it over to you, and we, we just humbly accept the uh, the ability to, to move forward and do these things. We, we just pray, Father, that each one of us that is, is uh, convicted to be a part of this, that you'll just find the, the opportunity for us to serve. Father, we pray for all of these young people that are out uh, across the the multiple states and in the multiple colleges that they have the opportunity, Father, to, to be unashamed of the gospel and to have those conversations, to support each other, to love each other, to, to raise each other up in prayer, but also, Father, to stand firm in what they know to be true. Father, we just pray that uh, that this time this morning is, is glorifying to you, uh, that our ministry continues to be focused on serving and glorifying you in the truth that we know is in your word. Father, we thank you for this time together this morning. In Christ's name, amen. amen.